Hey everyone, it is Danny and welcome to this update video. And so in this video, we will be talking about what is currently taking place out there as well as that possibility for us to see development within the coming days. And we will also be talking about NOAA's prediction for the hurricane season. I should say the updated prediction for this hurricane season. And so guys, before I go into details... Okay, so let us go ahead and start off with a view of the Atlantic right now. And on infrared satellite, we are seeing that we have some showers and thunderstorms that are noted across uh, sections of the Atlantic basin. We see it just off the coast of Africa, extended westward, as well as in portions of the Western Caribbean. So, uh... As of right now, there are no marked disturbances, but that can change as we're going to be heading into next week because there is an increase in confidence, especially with the GFS model of something developing. So uh, we're going to be taking a look at all of that going further down into this video. But next, let us look at that Saharan air layer map. And so we have these various colors. And as we head more to the oranges, reds, and that pink shade, that is when we have more of an abundance of dry air out there. And that is a huge inhibiting factor for tropical cyclone development. And if you take note of those white areas, that's actually where or showers and thunderstorms are currently located and we're seeing that it is not within the region where we have the abundant dry air because that is highly unfavorable those are very hostile conditions out there so we have that shower development taking place where we don't have an abundance of dry air same story for the caribbean we don't see a lot of showers noted across the eastern half of the region but over in the west we see some shower and thunderstorm development and just as this influences uh showers and thunderstorms it is definitely going to be influencing tropical cyclones because it is an inhibiting factor and uh however once we have tropical waves moving mainly south of all that dry air then there will be an opportunity for development and that seems like uh what the gfs model is expecting so now let us go ahead and take a look at the gfs model run okay and so going to the 13th of august next saturday just over a week from now uh there we see that 1013 millibar low pressure system uh and we have some some of those colors those greens that yellow and red associated with it so that is really indicating the moisture or the shower and thunderstorm development and so next going to Tuesday the 16th we see that the system hasn't really intensified to anything significant and it is on approach to the windward islands by that time and this lack of intensification is likely going to be due to maybe some dry air or some unfavorable shear that is out there but GFS is showing that we will have the system not really becoming anything of great significance by Friday the 19th of August so uh, this is very far out because today is just the fifth and going this far out there are bound to be changes so we've been seeing a lot because previously gfs was expecting something maybe try to develop in the gulf then they didn't start showing it again and now we are seeing this so there are bound to be changes so uh let's wait and see what is going to be happening but going to sunday the 21st of the month gfs is showing that for the long term we would have that system now making its way up into the uh bahamas region the turks and caicos region right there so let's wait and see what's going to be happening but as i said this is for the long term and in terms of euro euro is not really expecting anything significant on the model run but we do have the ensemble tracks that are showing maybe something try to develop so as I said, this thing here is pretty far out. So these are long-term predictions. And uh, if we have another massive dry air moving in from Africa, then that is really going to be helping to keep things at a minimum in terms of its intensity. But the track of it will be influenced by the high-pressure system, the Bermuda High. So if we have a weaker high-pressure system, we would look for more of a northwestward-like track with it. However, if we have a stronger high-pressure system, then it is likely that uh, we will have that wave being steered on a continuous westward motion, which is what GFS was showing. So uh, let's wait and see what is going to be happening with the system here. But in terms of the ensemble tracks, let's take a look at that. 
And so uh, going to the 14th by Sunday, here we have the Euro tracks. We're not seeing a whole lot of members hopping on to something developing out there, but we do have some and some of them are even showing tropical storm force winds. And interestingly, that little cluster right there might be something else. Maybe another wave that is going to be trying to develop. But I mean, this is the time of year when we see that happening. So we'll definitely have to be on the lookout for that. But that is what the models are showing. We have GFS expecting that there might be something uh, to watch, especially as they're going to be heading into the late part of next week, guys. So if there's going to be a wave out there that might develop, then it will be marked as a disturbance on the National Hurricane Center's five-day outlook map. But as of right now, no new tropical cyclones are expected within the next five days. And so guys, now let's go ahead and talk about NAWA's prediction or updated prediction for the hurricane season. And so here we have this um image to summarize it so we have a 60 percent chance of above normal activity so uh that is the greatest chance that we're seeing here on this pie chart so uh, it is likely that we will see an above average season with that uh they are expecting 14 to 20 named storms off which 6 to 10 could become hurricanes and then 3 to 5 major hurricanes so uh the only change with this in terms of the numbers here is that there is one less named storm so pretty Previously, when they made their prediction, I believe it was in May, uh, they were expecting 14 to 21 named storms, but now we have just one less named storm that is expected, which isn't too impactful. So uh, let's wait and see what the hurricane season, what the rest of the season is going to be like. The best case scenario with these numbers would be 14 storm, uh, 14 named storms, six hurricanes, and three majors. Meanwhile, the worst case scenario would be 20 named storms, 10 hurricanes, and five major hurricanes. But as of right now, we've just had three named storms out of that number, uh, out of these numbers that are expected here. So, uh, as I said, let's wait and see what the rest of the season is going to bring. So. Maybe we will have Danielle being crossed off this list here as we're going to be heading into the next, say, about 10 days or so, maybe a bit more than that. But let's see what's going to be happening, guys. And as we head into the rest of the hurricane season, it cannot be emphasized enough that if you're in areas that are usually impacted by tropical cyclones, you take all the necessary precautions. So uh, I'm talking about the east coast of the U.S. Uh, as well as the Gulf Coast, even portions of Central America and definitely the Caribbean. So guys, please ensure to stay updated. Of course, I'm going to be keeping you updated as time goes by and ensure that you're prepared should in case a tropical cyclone is going to threaten your area and so that is really it for this update video and if you found it to be quite informative please give a thumbs up and you can also share your thoughts with me in the comments or ask a question i will try to respond as best and as soon as i can and of course remember to always be weatherwise